Josh, is severe weather and welcome everybody. I hope everyone's had a great February meteorological spring. March 1st starts on Saturday. So we are almost finished with meteorological winter. That doesn't mean we're done with the cold weather though, as this video is going to discuss here in a little bit. We've got a little bit of a taste of spring here this week. It's beautiful out there where I live in Raleigh, low 70s and sunny today. I would love to see this stick around for quite some time. Maybe not, though, for the pollen that might be coming. But we are going to see yet another invasion of the polar vortex coming up here in less than two weeks. And I do want to talk about that as well as uh, the prospects for what's going on in the tropics, not just in the Atlantic, but worldwide where things are pretty busy. So I'm going to share my screen with you all and kind of walk you through a, a very short, at least for me, presentation today, uh, just because I've been kind of out for about a week or so, just a lot going on and uh, have to play catch up, of course. But here's a look at temperatures up to 70 degrees in South Dakota, 80s in Texas and the desert Southwest, mid to upper 70s across South Florida, Georgia, low 70s in the Carolinas, a taste of spring all the way up to Chicago and Des Moines today, where temperatures are in the 50s. So it's hard pressed to find the cold air that was here a week ago. And so we call this a spring of deception. That's where we are right now. Third winter still to come, despite the fact that meteorological spring starts on uh, Saturday, March the 1st. And the meteorological seasons are a little different than the astronomical. The astronomical goes from basically uh, the shortest possible day of the year, December 21st, to what's called the equinox here, which is around March 21st, uh, whereas meteorological winter are just the three calendar months that are the coldest, December, January, and February. So meteorological spring will then will be March, April, and May, uh, which is the time of the year when we often see our most severe weather across the United States. Now, the country is looking pretty good. We do have a storm system that's affected the Northwest with power outages. That is tracking east into the Dakotas. Uh, we do have a storm that's leaving Florida, still a bit cool and cloudy, but things are improving there. And the Northeast will be dealing with some cloud cover and some rain and higher elevation snow as well. Uh, but all in all, this is not a bad look here for the end of the month of February. And you can see as far as winter weather goes, all we see right now are in the mountains of the Northwest. Purple indicates the advisories for winter weather and winter storm warnings in effect for the Cascades, mainly those higher elevations to the east of Seattle. No freezing issues at this point outside of the norm. And as far as flooding goes, we do have some flood potential across parts of Montana and across parts of western Washington. By the way, we did see a landspout tornado in South Dakota yesterday for the first time ever in the month of February. And we did have tornado warnings just to the east of Salem, Oregon, where there was some hail. So we're not totally out of the woods here, but things are definitely quieter. Now I'm going to take it to the eastern U.S. so we can track our current storm. Uh, we have one that's leaving the East Coast here, not going to be anything subtropical, but it will bring heavy rain into Bermuda. Uh, it did bring some flooding to Key West yesterday. You can see a little bit of shower activity across northern New England, some higher elevation snows as well, uh, which is what you don't want to hear in upstate New York. We've had so much lake effect, but unfortunately that is going to continue. Here's our next storm system in the morning tomorrow, tracking across the Mississippi River towards Illinois and Indiana. And... We could see a brief amount of freezing rain here and light snow over southern Michigan and central Wisconsin around lunchtime tomorrow. But this system is going to be tracking pretty quickly and temperatures will be marginal for this event. So we're not super worried about it. Rain moves through the Ohio Valley here tomorrow afternoon and evening, then into the northeast when we are likely going to see some wet snow falling over parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and eventually into the Maritimes on Thursday as well. That's going to follow with a shot of some chilly air here for Friday, so it does turn cooler again after this spring warm-up here across the Mid-Atlantic and the Great Lakes region, but this will not be as cold as what we've experienced over the last couple of weeks. I want to show you the Madden-Julian oscillation here. And uh, why this is important, of course, uh, it, it kind of shows us what's going on globally in the tropics. And uh, we were in some very cold phases last week. Phase eight, one, two, and three are all cold phases this time of the year across North America. Uh, now, the line here has moved closer to center, meaning we're in what's called a null phase. And this has kind of put the brakes on that winter cold around the 20th of February right through the 25th. But as we head into March, you will see we move away from that null and back into a colder phase one and phase two for the beginning of March. And this is going to allow that colder air to spill back down from Canada into the United States here for the beginning of March and maybe even into the middle of March. As we take a look here at the upper level pattern, you can see a large ridge of high pressure in the western U.S. That kicks our storm out to the east. You can see 
Uh, really, we don't have any cold air attacking the country at this point. We've got some instability moving away, but our polar vortex is up here over the northern Hudson Bay. Now, as we roll this down, you'll see a piece of it quickly moves into the east late this weekend over the weekend. So it does turn colder again this weekend, but then that retreats. And then we head into a stormier pattern next week, right around next Tuesday. And this one is one that we'll have to watch uh, for uh, heavier snow in the mountains, but also as it moves east, potential severe weather and heavy rain across parts of the deep south here by this time next week. Unfortunately, though, there's another piece of cold. You can see it coming down here. Uh, this is cross-polar flow that comes across into the eastern United States and the latter part of next week and right around Saturday and Sunday, the weekend we are changing our clocks in many states in the United States, pushing them forward an hour we set the weather back into wintry like temperatures as much of the country stays below average. And so uh, the prospects of uh, trying to get some planning done early are not looking great for most of us. Even those of you in northern Florida need to be watching this uh, cold as it comes down, as we do probably see another frost or freeze threat getting down farther south to the Gulf of Mexico. It's not just the cold we have to worry about, but potential winter weather again, believe it or not. Uh, this has definitely been a more impressive winter than recent winters for most in the eastern and northern United States. There's always some exceptions, of course. I know New York and Philly and Boston haven't seen a ton of snow, but March, we can still get snow. And this pattern certainly favors that potential uh, to happen here. Here's a look at the longer range. Once we get through that next week and through the week of the 10th of March, we do start to see things warming back up. Uh, for the middle of the month of March. And when we see a big trough like this in the West and a big ridge off the East Coast, we have to be concerned with potential severe weather and tornado outbreaks. It's too early to talk about exactly where and when, but this is something you're going to want to be getting ready for again if you're in the Mid-South, in Dixie Alley, uh, maybe in Southern Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee as well, this area right in here, and eventually into the Carolinas and Southeast as well for the second portion of March. So we are heading in that direction, but it's going to get colder before it gets warm uh, and certainly a lot of back and forth, as you might expect in March. Here's a look at temperature departures. They are very warm uh, over much of the country, with the exception of Florida, but it does turn chillier here over the weekend across the northeast and eastern Canada. In fact, we could be as much as 30 degrees below the average across northern New England by the time we get to next Tuesday morning. That cold does retreat. We see another mild pattern, but another shot of cold comes in. And this is the polar vortex dropping down. You can see the entire southern and eastern portion of the United States will be settling into much below average temperatures by the weekend after next, perhaps as cold as 20 to 30 degrees uh, below zero. And the one thing that sticks out to me is the warmth that you see here in western Canada. Uh, with that big ridge building in, that allows cold air to come down underneath, hit and attack all the way into the Gulf and all the way into the southeastern United States. And you can see that here. The 10th and the 11th could be quite chilly uh, down into Florida before we start to warm things back up the following week. Uh, I do want to show you all here what temperatures could look like. This is just one model, the European. It doesn't necessarily... Uh, mean we're going to exactly see this, but it gives you an idea of what's to come. And you can see the chill that comes into the Northeast here at the end of the week. Um, despite the fact that it's nice and mild in the Southeast Thursday, look at Friday. Things are going to turn quite a bit cooler as we drop into the 30s and 40s in the Mid-Atlantic region, 50s and 60s in the Carolinas, uh, low 70s in the Houston area, and not that bad across the plains here on Friday. But look at the Northeast and especially New England. It's definitely getting colder and we could start the weekend below zero in parts of New England and eastern Canada. But another shot of cold comes in here over the second portion of the weekend. And we start the first Monday in March at 10, 20, maybe 30 degrees below zero Fahrenheit over much of northern New England and across Quebec and eastern Canada. It is going to warm up after that, but only for a brief amount of time. Then another wave of cold comes down and hits us pretty hard here around the 10th and 11th. And you can see uh, the morning of the 10th. This is just one model. But it brings freezing temperatures down to the Interstate 10 corridor. It brings single-digit numbers back down into parts of Michigan and New York State, teens down into the mountains of western North Carolina and in east Tennessee. This sets us well below average here as we start that uh, first full week where sunsets will be after 7 o'clock. So uh, it's going to be pretty darn cold there. Here's a look at the European model, which is going to give you all an idea of what we're talking about storm track-wise. And again, this can subject to change. Uh, but you can see here the cold that comes down into the northeast. Let me, uh, oops, I clicked one button here. I shouldn't have. But this is next Thursday, or this Thursday. 
And you can see still pretty quiet weather with a storm moving through the east, but then we start to see cold air coming down in waves and more snow hitting us here as we get to the weekend. I'm going to learn to do this without uh, here we go. Uh, so you can see this is the weekend. It's very cold across the eastern U.S. We have snow falling across New England, big area of high pressure spilling down, but a pretty quiet weather stretch through the weekend aside from the cold. Next week, we have a storm moving into California Sunday into Monday. That is going to move into the plains Monday and Tuesday, and we are going to see a return of Gulf moisture here from the Gulf of America slash Mexico. Call it what you want. I don't care. Uh, and you can see low pressure here uh, by the time we get to this time next week is going to allow that moisture to feed northward. Heavy rain again looks to be a threat, but severe weather also looks to be a threat. Tough to say exactly who's going to see what. I do think we are going to have some tornadoes out of this and we're going to have some cold behind it with snow, maybe heavy snow back across the Rockies and high plains. It's a pretty powerful storm system by next Wednesday. I don't know exactly if it's going to track in this direction. So it may be showing snow in Milwaukee and Marquette, but that may shift to Minnesota. It could shift east uh, and south towards Indiana. Again, we don't quite know, but what it is showing is a good amount of rain and juice and severe weather across the deep south and into the mid-Atlantic region here by the middle of next week. Uh, behind that storm system, as I mentioned, it gets colder. The European is hinting at some winter mischief. It's been doing this for a couple of runs now, but showing potential snow and ice down into places like Oklahoma and Arkansas. And it is possible that this finds its way eastward into the Tennessee Valley, the Carolinas, or Virginia, West Virginia, and the Mid-Atlantic states. Still too early to say, of course, uh, but you can see how suppressed things are and how far cold that, that chilly air gets. So we may not be fully finished with winter yet in the Carolinas or Tennessee or Kentucky or the Mid-Atlantic area. And it's always possible that this ends up coming farther north and we get a decent-sized storm in parts of the northeast by the time we get to the weekend after next. Again. Too early to get too specific, but that signal is starting to show up. Here's a look at snow in the west here over the next seven days. It's going to pick up across the mountains of California next week and into the Rockies as well. And we're going to see quite a bit of snow coming in the month of March across the inner mountain west. Nothing unusual, but uh, certainly filling things back in. And even into April, we're likely to see snow. But again, that's not unusual. Across the eastern portion of the country, Aside from the cold in Canada, you can see the cold stretches farther south and we see snow potential all the way down to Tennessee, maybe the Carolinas and Virginia, Arkansas and Oklahoma here uh, for the uh, stretch of weather from about March 5th to 15th. And even after that, still holding on to some snow potential in New England and the Great Lakes area, not just to the end of March, but even into the beginning of April. Now, this is an average of every single model. It can shift. Uh, we can see some days where it's mild and then it goes back to cold again, kind of the back and forth. But certainly you can see that winter's not going to give up on us just yet. And here's what we're looking at. Total snowfall over the uh, next couple of weeks. And it looks pretty significant in this stretch here from the prairies down into the Great Lakes and into the northeast. But there's possibilities as we get down to the Ohio River, down to the south of the Potomac, certainly across the west and across the southern plains. Taking a look here at uh, the snow potential beyond that point, uh, you can see that we could see, actually, that's the same thing. All right, well, let's move on. <laughs> Embarrassing moment number one. I'm sure there'll be more. El Nino, La Nina, where are we now? Well, we've been in a week to moderate La Nina. We are starting to come back into a neutral phase here. You can see we're starting to get back to that 0.5 degrees Celsius below average. So as we head to this summer, it looks like we're going to be more neutral than one direction or the other. It's possible we go towards El Nino as well, but that's not a given at this point. You can see uh, temperatures across the Atlantic Basin are still running pretty warm across the Caribbean Sea, the Southwest Atlantic, and the Gulf of America slash Mexico, aside from near shore waters being chilly. But the big difference this year from last year as to what we're seeing is that the waters are quite a bit cooler coming off of the Cape Verdes here. And that that's something interesting we need to watch because last year the waters were so warm that we had about a, a, just a big amount of sinking, suppressing air. And we had that quiet stretch for almost two months where storms just couldn't survive the Saharan dust and the sinking air. Now that the water's getting cooler out here, that could actually favor more storms that are going to try to get going out here. It's not a given, but that's something we're going to have to watch. It's also possible El Nino kicks in and kicks up the wind shear and those storms don't survive that wind shear as they cross. But because of the fact that the water is still very warm here close to the southeast and in the Western Caribbean, um, there's going to be some pretty high upside again for storms that form close to land and strengthen rapidly. So that's what we're going to be watching for you. The Indian Ocean has been extremely active here. 
And in the Western Pacific, things have cooled off significantly. The areas that got hit hard last season, uh, Taiwan and China and the Northern Philippines are seeing below average temperatures. So we may be seeing a big shift coming this season. And speaking of the tropics, we've got a lot to talk about here on the other side of the globe. Uh, I'll zoom in to show you, but we had one system come by to the east of Fiji, to the west of uh, these islands over here. I'm trying to remember the names of them, and I apologize. But you can see that's our first system becoming a tropical depression now, Ray. We have another system, Seru, uh, which is expected to become our next equivalent of a typhoon. That stays to the east of New Caledonia, to the east of Vanuatu, and that kind of ends up in the same location. Australia, we've got things just offshore, both in the Coral Sea and on the west side. Neither of these is an immediate threat, but Alfred, we need to watch. It is going to strengthen. You can see there's a bend back towards Queensland here. Not certain yet it's going to hit Queensland directly or it could weaken, but something we need to be watching at this point. And then we've got uh, Bianca, which is a pretty intense system here that should weaken some. That's not a threat to land. And that's not it. There's more. A potential system, now a tropical storm, likely to become our next severe tropical storm approaching the southwestern coast of Madagascar in a couple of days. And this is very rare. We have this tropical cyclone here, uh, Garants, I think you call it. And this is expected to actually go right over the island of Reunion. That is something that's only happened twice in modern history. These islands here look very vulnerable, but it's very rare that we get a direct hit like this. And it's looking like it's going to go right over. So we'll show you Bianca first here. You can see it's moving pretty quickly into the higher latitudes or lower latitudes to the west coast of Australia. Uh, here is Alfred. This is the system that we do need to watch here in Australia. You can see some model guidance hints. It could try to make a comeback towards Queensland here, southern Queensland. Um, and there's just a lot of spread at this point, as you can see here. So this could certainly change. But this system is getting better organized pretty quickly and likely to strengthen into a more substantial system. Here's a look at Seru. This is the one that came by just to the east of Fiji and to the west of Tonga. That was the island I was looking for. Uh, it is uh, beginning to reach some cooler water and should start to weaken. You can see the wind shear coming in out of the west. We're not done. There's more. This is Garance. This is the one that's heading for a reunion here to the east of Madagascar. And uh, you can see that it is certainly on a strengthening trend as well. The wind shear is not really weakening it. This is reunion down in here. It is likely to go over that island here in about 36 hours. Ray has already moved past. That is no longer a threat to land. You can see it's losing tropical characteristics. And then we've got another system to watch here between Mozambique and Madagascar, which is right here. And moving very slowly, so lots of rain coming to that portion of the African continent. Well, that's all I've got to share with you all today, but I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. I'm going to try to do this a lot more often. I promise you. It's been, it's been crazy. Uh, but I do want to leave you with a word of encouragement. I am a Christian, first and foremost. I'm a meteorologist. I'm a dad. I'm a hardworking salesperson in my life, but I'm also a Christian. And I've been called to share the good news with you and encourage you and lift you up in, uh, in some scripture here. Uh, Paul tells the church, the Roman church, Romans 8, 28, New King James Version. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Again, I'm going to reiterate that. All things work together for good, not for evil, but for good to those who love God. You have the opportunity to love God the way that he loves you. He has given us each a purpose. He's given us each a gift and given us the joy of knowing that one day we can live heavenly with Jesus Christ, our Savior. But you've got to make that decision. And we start with it by loving God so that those good things can come together for us. No matter how much evil is out there, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And that is the good news that I wanted to share with you all here today before I leave. And we'll be back soon. Hope everybody's got a great evening set up for you. And we'll talk again. Take care.